Hello once again. In this lesson, you will be introduced to test 13 to test 15 of paper 2 of the 2019 O-Level paper. So far, we have already discussed test 9 to test 12 of the same paper in a previous lesson. Similarly, we have also completed discussions for paper 1. For paper 2, the overall mark that you will be getting is 60. So let's work together to see how you could get as much as you can for this paper. This paper is relatively different to paper 1 because you are required to write more. And of course, there is quite a bit of reading that you have to do. Let's start off this session by looking at test 30. Some employment opportunities are advertised in a local newspaper and are given below. Match them with the descriptions of people given. Write the correct letter of the advertisement in the box. Before reading the text, it would help to quickly go through the descriptions of people so that you have an idea of what you are looking for. This will help you to skim and scan for the information thereafter easily. If you would like to know what skimming and scanning is and how to hone this skill, you do look at our previous lessons on it. 1. A person with two small children who wants a few hours of work, unskilled labour in the early mornings. Two. A lady with no experience or qualifications is looking for a short-term, full-time job, Monday to Friday. 3. A student with no experience who cannot work on weekdays. 4. A student who has followed a course in hotel school is now looking for his first full-time job. 5. A person with many years of experience working in hotels is now looking for a well-paid part-time employment in a hotel. Let's read the advertisements now. A. Help. Snack bar serving person. Friendly and energetic. Experience not essential. Saturday and Sunday only. Call or drop in at Kingsway Centre, Badula. Telephone 074-800-4580 and ask for the manager. B. Guest's favourite hotel. Requires a part-time waiter or waitress. Only applicants with experience and good references need apply. Excellent wages. Meals on duty. Telephone 0735-27281. Office hours. C. Wanted a babysitter from January to July. Warm and kind-hearted. Hours 8.30 to 5. Monday to Friday. References required. For further details, phone 073-400-0018. D. Cleaner required for 12th floor modern office, block in the station road, Jaila. Two hours per day, Monday to Friday to finish work before 8 a.m. Wages, rupees 20,000 per month. Telephone 073-784-0868. E. Full-time cook. For a new and exciting cafe venture. Good conditions. Pay and working hours can be negotiated. Apply Green Cafe 078-848-7051. Now that we have read the advertisements, let's complete the task and match the descriptions of people with what we just read. A person with two small children who wants a few hours of work unskilled labour in the early mornings. This would be perfect for D, the cleaner who has just two hours of work a day. A lady with no experience or qualifications is looking for a short-term full-time job. Monday to Friday. This description fits C, where a babysitter is wanted for a short term from January to July. Number three. A student with no experience who cannot work on weekdays. This matches A. It says that the snack bar serving person does not need any experience and can work only on Saturdays and Sundays. Number four. A student who has followed a course in a hotel school is now looking for his first full-time job. This is for advertisement E. They need a full-time cook. Number five. 
a person with many years of experience working in hotels is now looking for well-paid part-time employment in a hotel. This description matches B. This person is looking for a part-time job and the hotel is willing to offer part-time work to an experienced waiter or waitress. The trick when reading is to always stay alert and read carefully. Look for key phrases that will help you fish out the correct answer. You may even want to use a pencil to underline the key phrases. Annotation or the marking of text is important when you read. This will help you stay focused. Now let's look at test 14. For this section you will be earning 10 marks. Always look at the marks you will be getting for each test and remember to spend more time on the ones that carry more marks. You have two options given in this section. You can choose one. Please don't waste your time doing both. Choose one and do it properly. The first option is a letter. Let's read the question together. Write a letter to one of your friends describing how you celebrated the teacher's day in your school. Use about 100 words. You are also asked to include these points. Always look at the guidelines given. You can that way write a paragraph on each if you like. If you want to learn about paragraph writing, you can watch a previous lesson on it. Let's read the guidelines. Activities done on the teacher's day. The role you played. Speeches made. How you felt about the celebrations. Let's do it together. 12 Koswatha Road, Navala. 5th October 2020. Dear Utvala, Hope you're doing well. Today we celebrated Teacher's Day in our school. It was an exciting day for all of us. The entire school was celebrating the dedicated service given to us by our dear teachers. We had some great activities planned. There were speeches, dancers and some songs too. I was so excited about Teacher's Day because I had to compare the event. I was nervous at first but I managed to introduce all the different items we planned for the event. There were some speeches made of course. The principal gave a wonderful speech and our head prefect also gave a speech on the integral role teachers play in our lives. After the event was over, I was so happy, simply elated. Not only did I manage to compare the event successfully, but I was happier about the fact that our teachers were appreciated on this day. I am truly grateful to each and every one of them. How was Teacher's Day celebrated in your school? Do write back. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. From your friend, Kamala. You would have noticed that I have used all the guidelines given. Under the first bullet point, activities done, you would have noticed that I have given speeches, dances and songs. Under the role I played, well, I have stated that I was the compere for the event. The compere of any event will always introduce the events that are to take place and make sure the function runs smoothly on stage. The third guideline expects you to state the speeches that were made. In my letter, I have stated that speeches were made by the principal and the head prefect. The final bullet point expects you to assert how you felt about the celebrations. I have initially stated that I was nervous and then later on I have mentioned that I was happy and elated. If you are not much of a letter writer, you have the option of choosing B. In this question, you are presented with a pie chart. This, as I have said before in the lesson about describing graphs, charts and tables, is similar to a question that you may get in an IELTS exam. Let's read the question together. The following pie chart 
shows how Mr. Pereira spent his salary in the month of July 2019 on various household needs. Study it and write a description about it. For this too, you are expected to write about 100 words. You are also expected to use the following words in your description. Highest percentage, lowest percentage, more than, less than, equal. Let's do it together. The pie chart shows us how Mr. Pereira spent his salary. Mr. Pereira has spent the highest percentage of his salary on food. An equal percentage of his salary has been set aside for savings and clothes. Additionally, 15% of his salary has been spent on education. This is more than what he spends on transport. He has also spent 12% on transport. He has spent less than transport on electricity. The lowest percentage of his salary is spent on other, which could mean miscellaneous goods and services. The pie chart clearly indicates that more than half of his salary has been spent on food, education and clothes. Note that in this answer I have used all the phrases that were given. Always refer to guidelines and points given in your question. Let's now move on to test 15. You are given a small description of Peter. This is a comprehension passage and unlike the shorter comprehension passages done in paper 1, this carries 8 marks. Let's read the passage together. Peter was born in southern England in 1812 when industrial revolution in England was well underway. As thousands of factories were open for business, people left their farms for the cities. But their dreams of making more money and improving their lives always did not come true. Men, women and even children often exchanged back-breaking work in the fields for the boredom and danger of factory work. Peter's family moved to London when he was five. His father, John, worked as a clerk so he was better off than many people in London. But with his large family and love of entertaining, he and his wife constantly lived beyond their means. When Peter was 12, John was arrested for failing to pay a debt. He was sent to debtor's prison where people were kept until they could pay back the money they owed. Peter was taken out of school and forced to work in a shoe polish factory, wrapping and pasting labels on bottles. He worked from dawn to dark, six days a week in a dark room, listening to rats squeak between the rotting floorboards. His father finally inherited some money, settled his debts and was released from jail. Peter later claimed that the factory experience nearly destroyed him. The story of Peter's childhood reads like the story in one of his novels, forced to work at a young age. Peter suffered long hours and unhealthy conditions common in factories in the 19th century England. Memories of his experience haunt him for the rest of his life. This passage has two tasks. Let's look at the first. You are asked to indicate whether the sentences given are true, false or not given. This will also require you to skim and scan for answers. If you do not find a sentence given in the passage, please tick not given. You will be getting three marks for this section which means half a mark per question. The first statement, Peter was born in London. This is false because we are told that he was born in southern England. The second sentence is, some people in the farms migrated to cities. This is true. We are told that people left their farms for the cities. The third one is, working in factories became a tiresome experience for people. This is true because we are told that men, women and children often exchanged back-breaking work which means work that is tiring and physically demanding. The fourth statement is, Peter had two brothers and one sister. 
in his family. This is not given as we are only told about his family moving to London and we are told about his father John who worked as a clerk and we are told about John's wife too. Since there is no mention of brothers and a sister, we can say not given. The fifth statement is that John and his wife had spent money with care. This is false. We are told that they spent money beyond their means, which means they spent more than what was earned. The sixth statement is Peter became an author later in his life. This is true because we note that he has written novels. Look at the sentence. The story of Peter's childhood reads like the story in one of his novels. Now let's look at task two. Write a word from the first paragraph closest in meaning to each phrase given below. Since they have mentioned to only look at the first paragraph, do just that. A. Very hard and tiring. Backbreaking. This means that work was hard and tedious. B. Possibility of harm or injury. The answer is danger. The next question asks you to write the sentence in paragraph 2, which says that Peter's father had a fairly good life. The sentence for this is, John worked as a clerk, so he was better off than many people in London. In the third question, you are expected to underline the word that best explains the behavior of Peter's parents. You will be getting a mark for this. Wise, irresponsible, intelligent, thoughtful. The correct answer is irresponsible. Yes, they did live their lives rather irresponsibly. The fourth question asks you to underline the most suitable title for the given text. This too is just one mark. Peter's childhood, Peter's dreams, Peter's prison life, Peter's school life. The answer is Peter's childhood. The passage is about his life as a child after all. That brings to end the session on part two of paper two of your 2019 O-Level paper. The next session will discuss text 16, which is essay writing and composition. If you found this useful and you want to be alerted on many more lessons on your O-Level English syllabus, please subscribe to our channel. Have a great day.